Hog Killing Bullets for the 45 ACP, Part 1, William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm an author, and I've done a number of outdoor books, and also a business book, Create Your Own Job Security, Plan to Start Your Own Business at Midlife. In this book, I advocate that people start businesses at any age, anywhere, at any time when they need to raise a little money, like right about now, and tell you exactly how to choose an appropriate business for you. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And we're out on our range slash food plot. And we're shooting our Remington R1S stainless steel 45 ACP. And the loads we're using today are 230 grain XTP hollow points. Uh, these are designed to be hunting loads. And five away. And it looks like five hits on the target. We have eight additional rounds. We'll see how we do all fan on our knockover targets there. Well, we pretty well blasted some and chipped and nibbled some others. Uh, we have secured some 230 grain XTP bullets and loaded those up to 850 feet per second and shot those. And what we found out was that our pistol at 25 yards uh, patterns a little bit to the left and a little bit high with these loads which is fine. Uh, they, the pistol does have adjustable sights, so we can adjust the pattern strike a little bit without any problem. Uh, what I was more concerned with was the penetration of the hollow-pointed projectiles. And what we found was when we shot these pecan rounds, there was no indication that I could see that the hollow point actually expanded at all. Not at 850 feet per second. Now if you walk this up to 1,000, 1,200 feet per second, I think you'll see something happening. But at 800 feet per second, it don't look like much is going on. Uh, this one penetrated, oh, about 3 eighths inches of wood, and its exit hole is smaller, if anything, than its entrance hole. So, no, uh, that bullet point just ew, it went right on through. Now we did have one round that busted up the piece. But even so, uh, there's no significant indication of expansion here. These XTP bullets are expensive. They're about 4.5 cents per round. And in particular, uh, this is what they look like, and I'll show you some close-ups. Way back when, in the 1970s, these bullets were sold. The point is not quite pure lead, but it does have a jacketed base. And you could even buy kits where you could form these tops out of pure lead, swag those, and then swag the base jackets on them. And that sort of technology lasted for a few years. 
before the bullet companies actually started making bullets like this. Jacketed hollow points just as they had been doing for rifle bullets for decades before. But they never got around to doing it with pistol bullets until the mid 70s or so. Now, about shooting hogs. I have killed hogs in hunting situations with everything from the 22 short to the 75 caliber rifle. And I've shot hogs of moderate size. Now the biggest one I've ever killed was about 370 pounds or so. And he was a good size healthy hog. Hogs get bigger. Hogs get much bigger. And it makes a whale of a difference as where you're tackling a 200 pound hog or where you're trying to take down a 600 or a 1,000 pound hog. Hmm. I don't know if you can imagine such a thing. A 600 pound hog will stand this high at the shoulder. It is a formidable animal. It is scared of nothing that walks. To kill it, you must have deep penetration. Even if you're lucky enough to be in a tree stand and shooting straight down on top of it, there is this much flesh, heavy flesh, and hide between the top of the neck and the spine. So pretty much where you want to shoot it is in the back of the head if you can get that kind of shot. With such a shot, you can kill it with a 45 ACP. Now, it's coming at you and it will run with his teeth going like that and ready to get you and you're shooting straight as a skull, of course you're going to shoot at the skull and what will likely happen is the bullet will bounce off the skull plate. Boom! Like that. So you want to get it from the side and you want to get it around the ear area where you have a flat piece of bone to shoot against. On a big hog, you don't want something that blows up on the shoulder. It's got to get inside. You want penetration. Even though our 230 grain XTP bullets did not expand even in this oak, that indicates that it will penetrate fairly deeply. Although I wouldn't expect much, of, much expansion on the inside of a hog, not at 850 feet per second. 1,200 feet per second? Well, maybe. But that may be a little too hot if you want deeper penetration. Because the hotter you make it, and if it does start blowing up on the surface, the less the penetration. So this is the sort of trade-offs you get when you are making bullet selections for a game killing. Now, since this is not going to expand appreciably, can I find a cheaper bullet that will work? Maybe so. Uh, there are molds for 230 grain Keith Wadcutter style bullets for the 45 ACP. And I have such. And we've just made up some lead alloy. So I'm going to cast some 230 grain flat point bullets. And we're going to load it up in these cases and see what we've got. This is, of course, my old herder's press here. And this is the Hornaday deprimer and resizing die. I have several other videos on reloading, including using this single stage press. Since it's too hot to do any bullet casting outdoors right now, uh, there's a danger of actual actually a drop of sweat falling in a pot of molten lead and giving a steam explosion. 
So that's what that's why you don't cast when it's uh, above 90 degrees, uh, which it is out there right now. So we're going to go ahead inside and work up some loads. Now the Hornady handbook uh, gives me a good place to start and that's exactly what you should do so I've selected my load and so now we're going to charge up about 10 cases and go ahead and load them. Uh, one thing if you do a system like I do in wage charge you want to make sure your pan is actually free floating and we've checked the pan out at zero and we've zeroed it and we've checked our uh, setting on the scales a couple of times so we know that's right so we can go ahead and proceed it goes in the case and then we immediately see the bullet in the case so we know that that one is charged and there's no risk of double charging a case we have adjusted the die now to uh, where it will drop in the chamber And it is the same length as far as I can tell roughly. And it is the same length as the commercial cartridge. So we'll see and check if it will feed through the magazine first. If you had an old 1917 revolver, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about this because, of course, uh, as long as it's not so long as the cylinder would bind, you'll be just fine. Okay, that's seven rounds. So they should just scoot out. And they do. I think that's successful. We are preparing to cast bullets using a new Lee mold for the 45 ACP this morning. We want to try some bullets and see how the penetration differs between the cast bullets, these 230 grain hollow points, and this half jacketed lead bullet. Now ideally, these bullets should expand like this. Well, they do if they hit something really hard. This is one of the 230 grain bullets. And this hit a piece of green oak. It did not penetrate at all. As you see, it mushroomed nicely, but it rebounded from the oak and didn't penetrate. I have several previous videos where I use this outfit for casting bullets. When you cast bullets, you're going to find differences in bullet weight. One advantage of the half jacketed bullets is that they are reasonably uniform. The same can be said of swagged bullets rather than those which are cast. See, these match up pretty closely. Now, concerning the cast bullets themselves. The cast bullets are approximately 10 grains heavier. And this is the light end of the, of the projectiles. Hmm. You see, not even moving the balance beam at all. And this is the heavier end. Hmm. Why? 
This group of bullets likely has some internal flaws that you cannot see. I've already sorted any with any external imperfections and that's what's in this box. But these obviously uh, for some reason or other did not fill out completely on the inside. There's a little cavity. And so these go into the reject box. So consequently, only these three lots of bullets are going to be loaded. The heavier ones are presumably those that are best filled out and will be the best killing bullets. So this is what I'm going to reload for our testing. I'll lubricate them first and then we'll load them up. Although I really wasn't expecting to have to use it at this stage, I'm finding that I'm having to resize my bullets. Uh, and I'm not really set up properly for it. But this is a resizing die. And because this old herders has a non-standard base, the plunger here uh, sits inside this shell holder. And then you put your bullet on it and force it through the die and it ejects a bullet up the top. So here is your resized bullet and then you just repeat this process. I'm going to attach the base to here so we have it permanently mounted but I just haven't got a chance to do that yet. And actually when you're running this for production there is a little chamber up here for catching your bullets, but I just haven't had time to put all that together. We have now loaded up our cast, lubricated, and sized lead bullets that were thrown from our new lead mold here. Uh, we discovered that yeah, to load them well, we really did have to size them. And you saw me work my sizing die a little bit. But uh, we'll set up a much smoother path of running that machine. So this is the last case to be run here. Okay. One loaded cast bullet. We also have our half jacket bullets and then we have our 185 grain and 235 grain XTP bullets. Now what we're going to do next time is do a sandbox test which will consist of layers of sand and spruce that are staggered to judge the penetration and the expansion of these projectiles for possible use on hogs. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. The reloading methods I use are slow and precise and are adequate to supply me with the few rounds I shoot at big game animals every year. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 825 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviasmith.com. For information about my business books, you can go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To find out more about my novel, screenplay, and movie project, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.